So the other day, I was thinking to myself how when we're children, we believe in really nonsensical things like Santa Claus, the Easter Bunny, the Tooth Fairy. And then I was thinking about how strange and weird it would be if when we became adults, we continued to believe in really nonsensical things. Anyway, today's video is all about the Ethical Butcher. So who exactly are the Ethical Butcher? Well, the Ethical Butcher are a company here in the UK who in Veganuary this year, shared a post across their social media that said that we shouldn't be doing Veganuary, we should be doing Regenuary. And in the post they shared, they made claims such as eating avocados and nuts is worse for the environment than eating well-raised animals. In 2021, we're still gonna be regurgitating this misinformation that has been debunked so many times. And you'd think with such a bold claim, such a claim that contradicts the mainstream scientific consensus, that there would at least be one scientific study or one source to support that claim. But you would be mistaken because of course, as we know, the claims they're making are as fictitious as the concept of an ethical butcher. And so when I saw this post, I decided to make a response. And so I made a response and shared it to my Instagram. And in my response was a whole bunch of different scientific evidence and different studies that supported the claims that I was making. And so what do you think the ethical butcher did in return? Do you think that maybe they they put up another post addressing the things that I'd said, providing evidence to support their claims? Well, no, you would be wrong if you presumed that because actually what they did is they blocked me. And then when someone asked them why they blocked me, they said it's because I was being dogmatic? Yes, that's right, everyone. Welcome to 2021, where providing scientific evidence to support your claims makes you dogmatic. But if we look at what being dogmatic means, it means treating your opinion as if it was fact. I suppose a bit like making unsubstantiated claims on a social media post and providing no sources or references for those unsubstantiated claims. But anyway, I'm not gonna focus on their post or my response in this video because I'm more interested in talking about the ethical idea of an ethical butcher. But just before we move on to that, I do want to reference one study called Grazed and Confused because the study looks specifically at the claims being made by advocates of regenerative animal agriculture and holistic management. The study is a meta-analysis that identified 300 sources and was conducted by an international team of researchers, including those from the University of Oxford, the University of Cambridge, and two of the highest ranked agricultural universities and institutions in the world. The study looked specifically at the claims that those like the ethical butcher make when it comes to sequestering carbon through the grazing of animals. Now, the ethical butcher like to say that grazing animals can be carbon neutral, and what that means is that the emissions being produced by the animals are offset by the carbon that's being sequestered through the grazing management systems that they are being farmed within. However, this study showed that that is complete nonsense because at best, you could only sequester 20 to 60% of the total emissions being produced by the animals in the first place. In essence, grazing animals are net contributors to the problem. And even if you could graze animals in a carbon neutral way, the study showed that over time soil reaches something called soil carbon equilibrium, which means at that point you're not sequestering or offsetting any of the emissions produced by the animals in the first place. It really just laid to rest the nonsense that has been propagated by the people that talk about this system of farming. But anyway, let's move the conversation on now to the ethical idea behind the ethical butcher because of course by using the word ethical they're implying there's something different about what they do we think oh an ethical butcher what could they possibly be doing that's so radical to make the process of killing animals ethical i wonder what it could be well i was sent an article written by someone called florence wildblood and in the article florence interviews glenn burrows and glenn is one of the co-founders of the ethical butcher florence asked glenn well, what about the slaughtering of the animals? And this is what he had to say in return. It's the one part of the business that I freely admit we do not have much control over or enough control over. That's the best that you have to say about the killing of animals. You know, the animals that are killed for your business and so you can profit off of their death. And that's what you have to say, that you freely admit 
that you don't have much control over the process. What you mean to say is you have no control over the process. The process of killing animals, the slaughter. You know that bit in the, in the process where a sentient being is taken against their will to a slaughterhouse and has a blade pulled across their throat or they're thrown into gas chambers. Just that little bit of the process where a sentient being has their life taken from them needlessly. Well, actually, gotta hand it to Glenn because he admits that he doesn't want the animals being killed in slaughterhouses. So Glenn actually has another alternative for how we should kill these animals. This is what Glenn believes will make his business really ethical. In the future, what I would like, which has only just become legally available, is to have a mobile unit that visits the farms and does the kill in field. Some of the farmers who've trialed this have said this is absolutely the most humane way. So Glenn's idea of a perfect world, an ethical world, is a world where there are slaughterhouses on wheels that drive around the country going to different farms and killing the animals on the farms instead. Because yes, of course, the killing isn't the ethical problem when it comes to what we do to animals. It's the fact that we drive them to slaughterhouses. If we could just kill them in the fields with these mobile vehicles of death, then all of a sudden the process would be so humane and so ethical. And the phrase more humane, well, when you're comparing what you do against a slaughterhouse, it's almost impossible to think of something that wouldn't be more humane than what happens in a slaughterhouse. But at the end of the day, what you're doing is exactly the same as what happens in a slaughterhouse. It's now just in the field where the animals have lived their life. And the question isn't what is more humane, the question is, is it objectively humane? Now, of course, shooting a dog in the head is more humane than dismembering that dog while they're still alive. Of course it is. But that doesn't mean that shooting the dog in the head is objectively humane. And likewise, having mobile slaughterhouses does not make the act of taking the life of a sentient being objectively humane. I'm just so disturbed and sickened that we live in a society where butchering sentient beings can be described as being ethical. And not only that, but we're so desperate, so desperate to justify that act of killing that we make appeals to pseudoscience and then claim that having slaughterhouses on wheels makes the process so justifiable and ethical. I mean, what are we doing? At some point, we have to just take a step back and reflect and say, what the hell are we doing to these sentient beings, these poor defenseless creatures that we exploit with such an arbitrary justification that is so insane? At some point, we have to recognize the absurdity of what it is that we are doing. And another thing about Glenn as well is on the Ethical Butcher website, Glenn says that he was plant-based for 25 years. But in every single interview I've seen with him, it always says that he was vegetarian for 25 years. I, I was 25 years vegetarian. And so that means one of two things, of course. The first is that Glenn doesn't know the difference between being vegetarian and being on a plant-based diet. And if that's the case, that's awfully worrying because Glenn's making a lot of claims about a plant-based diet, so we'd hope he knows the difference. But I think that there's something else going on here, which is that Glenn, there's a reason why you are saying this on your crowdfunding page, where you are trying to entice people to invest into your company. You weren't plant-based for 25 years. You just weren't. But it's a nice selling point to say to people, isn't it? To go, you know, I was plant-based for over two decades, so I really get it. And so I really know about being ethical because it's something I care about. And then I found out about this style of farming. And so you can trust me because I know what you guys want because I was plant-based for over two decades. It's a nice selling point, Glenn, but ultimately it's misinformation, just like the pseudoscience that accompanies it. So look, here's a top tip. If someone is making claims that don't sound like they make sense, and then they're supporting those claims with anecdotal evidence and can't provide any peer-reviewed meta-analyses to support those claims, and not only that, but the actual peer-reviewed meta-analyses that exist contradicts those claims, then it's probably safe to assume that whatever that person is saying should not be taken seriously. I just think it's hilarious that we're supposed to go, Boy, this is a tough decision, isn't it? I mean, on the one hand, I've got the scientific literature that says we have to stop eating animals, and I've got my morals and values that say that killing animals is wrong. But then on the other hand, there's a butcher, a guy that profits off killing animals, who says that he's ethical and provides anecdotes to support that claim. I mean, who do I trust? The science, the peer-reviewed meta-analyses, my values and ethics, or a guy who profits off killing animals. And so I just wanna end the video here, but before I do, I wanted to say that 
as veganism continues to grow and as the number of vegans continues to increase, what we're going to see is individuals, businesses and organizations looking to capitalize off the changing attitudes of society. As society looks to be more ethical and more sustainable, people from within the animal agriculture industries are going to try and pander to the changing attitudes of society. They're going to sell us ridiculous ideas like that of the ethical butcher. The idea that killing animals can be compassionate, humane and ethical and also sustainable as well. But we have to see this for what it really is. Misleading marketing propaganda. Something that is trying to capitalize and profit off the changing attitudes of society. And as vegans, it is so important that we reject this because even though these organizations and individuals will say things like, we're against factory farming, we want to be more ethical, we want to create sustainable forms of farming, what we have to recognize is these industries are still profiting off and condoning the slaughter and torture of sentient beings. Do not fall into the trap of saying, well, it could be worse. At least they're not condoning factory farming because what they are condoning is the slaughter and the denigration of sentient beings bodies and for that reason we have to objectively take a stand against all of this rhetoric on all of this misinformation and recognize that the concept of an ethical butcher is as nonsensical is as outrageous as the concept of santa claus the easter bunny and the tooth fairy all right, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I really do appreciate it. Let me know down below in the comments what you thought of my response, what you think about the ethical butcher. And as always, I look forward to seeing you all in the next video.